If this machine wasn't provided to me, would I buy one? Some vinyl and leather. I'm Brad, welcome to DIY Wouldn't You. In this video, we're gonna be using the Atom Stack P7 M40 laser engraver and discussing why if you're trying to get into a cheap entry-level laser engraving machine this may be the one for you. Stay tuned. In the instructions it says that this sets up in about five minutes. Now I'll say it took about 15 for me um, and I actually had a little bit of a hiccup while I was setting this up. As I'm opening the components here I'm seeing this which is I'm assuming supposed to be the synchronous belt uh, for step three in the assembly process to drive this component back and forth. So I'm reaching out to my point of contact at Adam Stack to see what we do now. Now it turns out the instruction manual and the way the machine is actually set up were slightly different, I believe. The belt that's shown in the instruction manual is a continuous belt, but in reality the belt that's needed for your y-axis motion is a belt that has clasps on both ends that actually hook into this little bracket right here. You can use either one, but don't think that you got the wrong one just because you got one that has clasps on both ends rather than a continuous belt, if that makes sense. Anyway, let's burn some stuff. Now being that mainly what I do is woodworking, I've got some cedar, some white oak, and I've got some black walnut. Cedar is a soft wood, white oak and black walnut are both fairly hard woods. So we're gonna look at how this machine burns these three different types of woods, as well as the sample piece of what I imagine is either pine or birch that they provide with this. They also provide a couple pieces of acrylic, so we're gonna try this as well. Adam Stack did provide this machine to me for free. However, on a regular basis, I use my Xtool D1 10 watt laser engraver, and so I really have no reason to be biased towards this machine. I'm gonna tell you what I like, what I don't like about this machine. They recommend using a laser engraving program called Laser Gerbil, I believe. Laser Gerbil, I don't really know. I use Lightburn with my Xtool, and so that's what I'm gonna be using with the Atom Stack. I've got my engraver hooked up to my laptop. I've got it plugged into my 110 outlet. On the back of the machine here is the power switch. You can hear the motor running. The first burn that I'm gonna do is on the test piece of either pine or birch, whatever this wood is. So to adjust the height of the laser, you loosen this knob. The laser slides up and down. You set this spacer right there. What I'm gonna be burning on, well, everything that we're doing right now, is my logo because it's awesome. Before I set this machine up, I actually looked up a couple videos to see tips, tricks, and what people have done with this machine to get it to work efficiently, make sure that the settings were maximized. First off, you wanna make sure that your machine is connected to your engraving software, Atom Stack P7, and as you'll notice, it actually put the logo upside down. So we're gonna wanna delete it and bring it back in. You wanna check your justification on this laser. Now this is in Lightburn. To do that, you go to Edit, Device Settings, and right here you'll notice Origin. Front left, front right, rear right, rear left. You're gonna want it on front left, which is towards you and to the left. So right here in this corner. I like to make sure that Auto Home on Startup is set. Also, I don't remember what video I saw this on, but over here where your cuts, layers, and your input is for the engraver, if you go to console, and if you look here, number 30 is your laser power output. You're going to want to make sure that that is set to 1000. I believe when I hooked this machine up, it was set to 200 and something, and so it wasn't burning very strong. So I bumped that up to 1000, and it burned so much stronger. To change that, you go to edit, down to machine settings, and then right here where it says 30, you want that to be a thousand. And then okay. All right, now let's go to cut. And then in light burn, if you hit the frame button, the laser head actually pans the perimeter of where you're going to be engraving. Being that this is a test run, I want it to go fairly quickly. So I'm gonna make my speed 4,500 millimeters a minute. And I'm gonna take the power down to 60% because 
This is a soft piece of wood. Now the Atom Stack doesn't come with these, but my X tool came with a set of protective goggles for your eyes. Laser machines can actually damage your vision, potentially blind you. And so you're gonna wanna get a pair of these. They say that you don't necessarily need it because of the lens that's on the front of the Atom Stack machine, but I find myself wanting to watch the burn. And so I would recommend going ahead and investing in some of these goggles. Plus they're sexy. Grab your hips and slow dance with your toes in the sand. Dance into the motion, the motion of the ocean. Can we kiss and hold hands? Can you feel the romance? Dance into the motion. That's a solid deep burn to be set on 60% power and running 4,500 millimeters per minute. Uh, now I want to do something and I want to actually draw a circle around that logo slow the speed down and bump the power up and let it cut the logo out. I'm gonna make sure that this is set to line instead of fill. I'm gonna slow it down to 50. The motion of the ocean, All the way through just like nothing even at 4500 millimeters per minute and 60 percent power that logo was sweating through the back that's crazy so let's do something then let's try those same settings 4500 millimeters a minute and 60 percent power on some white oak some black walnut and some cedar and see the outcome Here's our cedar, our white oak, and our black walnut. As you can see, those burns all look really good. Now, the walnut it looks like it's charred a little bit, but I actually think it's some moisture coming out of that wood. The cedar is probably the most dry, and so that looks the cleanest there, but really, really crisp burn, really clean, uh, very accurate, and I was running it super fast, and it burned right at probably a 16th inch into all three of these wood, probably deeper into the cedar since it's a little bit softer. Way more impressed than I thought I would be. Okay, now let's try to burn the logo in some acrylic. We're gonna need to turn the power down. So for this acrylic, I'm actually running 5,000 millimeters a minute and 40% power. I did a fairly poor job of centering my test piece with the laser, but again, that's pretty impressive. So far, we've done the acrylic that this machine comes with, the craft wood that this machine comes with, black walnut, white oak, cedar, and I feel pretty confident that this machine would engrave leather just fine. This isn't leather, but it's vinyl. I've got this little notebook. And uh, so I wanted to see if it would burn through this, and it actually did pretty well. I turned the power down to, I think it was 20%, and left the speed at 4,000. And as you can see, it actually did pretty good. It's a little bit pixelated because I didn't have the lines per inch set quite high enough. I find that optimally you want that about 300 lines per inch. But as you can see, it turned out pretty well. Here at DIY Wouldn't You, we want to inspire and educate. We want to make projects entertaining and encourage you to try something fun, learn something new, and impress yourself and your friends. We want to remind you that just because you haven't done something, it doesn't mean you can't. So keep learning, keep building, keep DIYing. There's one more claim that Adam Stack makes about this engraver and that is that you can engrave mirrored stainless steel. Um, I would love to try that. I don't know anybody that just has mirrored stainless steel. Here's some mirrored stainless steel. Let's try it. I've read up some on people trying to do engraving on stainless with a diode laser, and a lot of people say that it can't be done or you have to coat the stainless with something to get it to take. But one thing that I read recently said that the laser needs to be burning white and that it needs to be spaced up off of your burn surface fairly substantially. So I've spaced the laser up about a half an inch to get the best burn possible on the stainless. I'm going to up my power to 100% where I've been doing 60 on all this wood. And I'm going to decrease my speed from 5,000 to 100. It takes a lot of heat to burn anything into metal. So I'm gonna slow it down substantially and up the power substantially in hopes to get a good solid burn on this. So. 
after running this for just about two minutes, I'm noticing that it's not burning on there. So I'm going to try something that I've seen people do and see if we can get any better results. First off, I'm going to drop the laser head down closer to the piece. Also, I'm going to color where I want to engrave with a Sharpie and see if that gives it something so that the laser is not just reflecting back off of the metal. So it looks like it at least burned into the Sharpie. I'll take some mineral spirits and clean that Sharpie off and see if it actually engraved into the mirrored stainless. That looks like a solid, not quite. I don't even know if you can see it. I think that if I were to take the time and do it again, maybe three or four passes, or potentially slow the speed down, that would actually work. I'll call that a, needs a little bit more research. So let's go over the pros and cons of this machine quickly. Um, cons, there's really not that many. It is 5 watts, so the power is not crazy, but I've actually been pretty impressed with the amount of power that this thing puts out. The instructions to set this up were pretty good. Uh, like I said earlier, the discrepancy between the belts was slightly confusing, but it sorted out no big deal. And actually, Adam Stack was gracious enough to send me a belt uh, when I reached out to him, no questions asked. And then another con, I don't even know if this is necessarily a con, in the setup, I would make sure that before you do any actual pieces that you're going to sell or use, that you take some time and run quite a few test pieces, figure out your settings, figure out your power output for the material that you're using. Um, I did have some issues right off the bat with the orientation. It was trying to burn things in a mirrored image. I had a little bit of trouble with the origin, um, where the machine was starting. It seemed a little bit backwards between where it said the origin was on Lightburn and where it actually was on the machine. This machine does come with this little card that you slide in between the laser and your work surface. However, if you were to lose this card, well, you don't really have anything to space it with. The X-Tool actually has a drop-down arm that you drop down, lower the laser until that arm hits your workpiece, and then you flip that arm back up and it's out of the way. That's super easy, and you don't have to keep up with it, other than making sure that you pivot it back up out of the way so it doesn't drag along your work surface when you're engraving. So this card, I would say, is a con. So that's the cons. Take the time, figure this machine out. It's powerful, but it's not gonna cut super thick material that well. So if you're cutting thin stuff, fantastic. This five watt does the job, honestly. Pros. This thing burns fantastically. You can turn the speed way up and still get a really nice burn. On these pieces of wood here, my logo is about an inch across. I burned 5,000 millimeters per minute at 60% power. It's burned well into the wood. Very crisp, very clean. So I'm very impressed with the quality of the burn. It's small, they call it portable, which I would say it is. Build quality, I would say, is very nice steel plates the railing is steel and it's painted everything seems to be built pretty tough I like the adjustability of the single turn knob it comes with legs to space the machine up if you need something larger underneath it so I'm impressed with the quality of the machine the quality of the burns the customer service so I would say for the $250 price point this is a beast of a machine I wouldn't hesitate to purchase one if you're interested in picking up an Adam stack p7 machine of your own check the link in the video description Thanks again to Adam Stack for providing me with this machine. I'm thoroughly impressed with this little 5 watt unit. I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more fun projects that we're working on, subscribe to the channel. We'd love to see you back. If you want to be the first to know when we post another video, hit the notification bell. I'm Brad. This is DIY Wooden You. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Gerbil, 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 gerbil.